He's a far worse president than Barack Obama. Biden is the worst president in the last hundred years. If you think about it, if a man will lie about how his wife died to defame an innocent truck driver, what else would he not do? At least twice, Biden himself has made public references to alcohol being involved in the crash. In 2007, Biden said the truck driver, quote, allegedly drank his lunch. And multiple news outlets, including CBS News, have reported that Dunn was drunk. The police reports have been lost. But Delaware Judge Jerome Hurley, who investigated the crash, supports Hamill. He tells CBS News there was no indication that the truck driver had been drinking. Last fall, a spokesman for Biden said Biden fully accepts the Dunn family's word that these rumors were false. If he'll lie about how his son died and claim he died in Iraq, what else will he do? I say this as a father of a man who won the Broad Star, the Conspicuous Service Medal, and lost his life in Iraq. If he'll lie about his college records, what else will he do? I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Secur Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. And I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. If he'll steal a speech from a British politician and take it as his own on national campaign, what else will he do? Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why is Gladys the first woman in her family in a thousand generations? To be able to get the university. My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football. Eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. There was no platform upon which they could stand. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone, I think is quite frankly, uh, ludicrous. The problem here is that Senator Biden told his audience he'd just been thinking about these things and he failed to give any credit at all to his famous British speechwriter. I should have said, to paraphrase Neil Kinnock, it's the only time I didn't in all the times I've ever used it. He lies about everything, everything. He said that he took the amnesty program for student loans to Congress and it only we only had two votes. No, you didn't even try to do that. Don't lie about it. It's a little bit more egregious now, or maybe not because he's senile, but he uses that cover or his supporters use that cover to say, well, he's not lying. He's just confused. Well, what was he for his most? He's a racist. He was the one that started to talk about, you know, the jungle in the 70s. He was the one who said that Barack Obama was the first clean, articulate black. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African-American yeah. who was articulate and bright and, and, and clean and a nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. Yeah. He was the one who said, put you all in change to a gifted group of black professionals. They're gonna put you all back in change. He was the one that said, junkie. Are, are you a junkie? What do you say to President Trump? He was the one who said, you ain't black. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. He's also a sexist and a sexual assaulter. Aside from Tara Reid's uh, pretty graphic descriptions, he can't keep his hands off young girls. He's had to have a video, remember in the 2020 campaign, after Elizabeth Warren and Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris said they believed, remember they believed Tara Reid, they believed, and he had a problem. And so right. he, had, he went, had that little video, I'm from a different generation. No, you're not, you just blow on girls' hair, you hug too hard. 
you get too close because that's what you do and you get away with it because you're Joe Biden. This is a guy who swam naked in front of female Secret Service people. He gets a pass on everything. And then so if it's racism or sexism or lying about people and destroying people's lives, he gets a pass. And then we get into the corruption. You take his houses, his lifestyle, and you take that tiny little period between his exit from vice president, that four years until his ascension as president, that's not enough time doing legal, honest work to justify post facto all of those houses and all of that lifestyle. And then he lies and says he's never met any buddy from Hunter's world doesn't know anything. You have pictures of him with it. So that's all the character so-called issue, but it's not what he did to us. He destroyed the border. He destroyed energy of autonomy. He destroyed the idea we had a low inflationary economy. He caused high interest rates. He destroyed the whole idea of Afghanistan as maybe a small, stable American presence at Bagram with this huge, efficient Air Force base. He gave $50 billion to terrorists that from those weapons. Everything he touches turns to dross. He has the on Midas touch. And the idea that these never Trumpers worship him and say he's a great guy and he's going to stop us from getting Trump. He is a total veneer, a construct, an artifact for the hard left Jacobins who've taken over this country and are pushing everything from reparations to destruction of the border to these Soros funded activist DAs. And he oversees that whole thing. I think he's going to have a rendezvous with Nemesis. I really do. His hubris is so much that bad things are going to happen and they're going to lose in 2024 or he's not going to be able to make it. He's going to have to come up with a very creative excuse why he's in the basement because he's not able to campaign. He can't say it's COVID this time. And this time he can't say he's good old Joe Biden from Scranton. If you just give him a chance, he's going to unite the American people and give you a good old Clinton centrist policies. No, we've seen what he did. So I think if he continues and the Republicans can get their act together, by that I mean right now, every single person, Tim Scott, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, should stand up and say, whoever is the nominee, I am going to support. Not like 2016, I'm going to support whoever wins. And then when Trump wins, they said, F you, I'm not going to do it. But they should do that and unite because they could take that. They could take the House by a big margin again. They could take the Senate. They can take the presidency. And then they should they know the face of the left now and they could really make some changes to save the country.